So today we got a call from a new employee from the awesome company, Elizabeth. Elizabeth called me up today and she said that Johnny no longer works there. He actually got a job somewhere else and that she's now our contact for the company. And she goes, you know, I really like this shirt you put together. I know everyone agreed with it, but I actually have a background in graphic design. Uh Uh-oh. And she's like, you know, it would be really cool if the awesome company, the logo was actually knocked out. So no matter what color shirt we had, the awesome company would be the same color. Okay. She's like, you don't mind making that change for us, do you? Okay, I'll see what I can do. So great. Now they want this text, their logo, the awesome company. They want this to not just be black, but to be knocked out out of the background. Okay. So we know we can do this with the mask. Let's see how this can be done. So let's see here. We are looking at our template. This is our smart object in the template. I'm going to double click on here. And here you can see that this is our design. And we have within that smart object, (laughs) here's another smart object. So we're going to double click here. And lo and behold, our original work is here. So now what we can do, we can take the logo and this is really, really cool. So what you can do is right click here, then click on blending options. Okay. Now what we're going to do in the center, you have blending options and underneath here, advanced blending, and you have a section here for knockout. You can just put deep. So what this will do, this will actually knock through. It's called knockout. It'll knock through all the layers. If you go shallow, it'll just do the one underneath it, directly underneath it. So usually we do shallow. This specific time we're going to do deep. And then what you do is this is the fill opacity. So we're going to turn that to zero. As you can see, as we turn it to zero, now the logo is transparent in the entire design. How cool is that? So what we do is we save it. And this is so cool. I want to show you this one more time to make sure. So what we did, we right click on the awesome logo layer, blending options. We right click, clicked on blending options. Under blending options, we looked for knockout and it it was set to none. You just set it to deep and then the fill opacity you send to zero. Okay. And then we saved it. So now let's go back here to our other smart object and you can see it's already knocked out. So we can save that. Now we come back here and so you don't notice anything at first. However, when we start switching shirts, you notice the logo changes color. How awesome is that? So now they can purchase any shirt they like, any color shirt they like. And now that didn't come out. It really works well with dark colors, but you can see how cool is that? Luckily, we made the new employee happy. And just as we got off the phone with Elizabeth, we got a call from our friend Johnny again. And Johnny's like, hey, how you doing? We're like, we're we're doing great. And he's like, hey, I got this new gig. I'm working at the art museum. Huh? Yeah, I'll send over the assets for you. And I'd like to get a shirt done. Okay, let's see what Johnny's up to this time. What he would like us to do. So... Let's see here, the art museum, okay. I see a picture of the Mona Lisa and instructions. We would like a shirt made with the Mona Lisa and the following text. I love art history. Feel free to make any modifications you like. We appreciate your creativity. The art museum, cool, we got a new project. All right, so let's create a new project. Okay, so we're gonna go to our merch template right here. Click create and let's get the Mona Lisa in here. All right. So I'm going to change this to black. Okay. So just click OK. And then I'm going to click this bottom layer here and I'm going to fill that to black. I hit option, alt, delete. And then the Mona Lisa, I'm going to scale her really big. I have a new idea on how we can use this new blending mode to, uh, knock out an object. So let's see, we got the Mona Lisa. We're going to place her about, uh, let's say right there. 
Then I'm going to do, I'm going to create a mask over half her face. So I hit the marquee tool and let's see, we'll go about there. Hit this mask and whoops, let's try this again. I hit shift command I to inverse it. And there we go. We got half her face. All right, that's good. Now what we're going to do is we are going to get our text and let's get like a really cool text. Let's see what we got here. So I'll try this new one, a love for thunder. And let's see how this works. So the text said, I love, we'll make this really big. And hit option to copy this over and double click this art. Get super big, hit this, nudge it up. So hold option, shift, option and shift, you hold it down and then you just drag a new object down so it's directly centered. And then we'll change this to history. There we go. That's kind of cool. And I'm going to group these. So we're going to change this let's rename this into i love heart history okay cool and then what we'll do is i'm going to delete this extra layer that i put here by accident now what i'm going to do i'm going to create by command j or control j if you're on a pc i'm going to duplicate the mona lisa i'm going to place her on top of the i love art history folder and then i'm going to delete the mask for the the second Mona Lisa. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option. So what that will do, that will create a clipping mask on top of a layer or folder directly underneath this layer. So how cool is that? So if I hit Alt or Option and I click it, you see the Mona Lisa. I hold Alt or Option and then I press the mouse button and you can see that the text is there. So it's a little dark. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to our layer adjustment and move the levels just a bit to kind of brighten it up. And what I'm gonna do is hit Alt and Option. So it only applies to this particular layer. And we're just gonna kind of brighten it up just a little bit. And what's great about this, I love using this method because I can go and make any edits to the text if I want to. So that's pretty cool. So if the client comes back and wants to make a change or if you want to sell the same design with different different versions of the same design you can do that so I can say like I love art history I love Renaissance artists I love amazing paintings you can you can just it go on and on for that and so this is really cool so now what I'm doing now I'm just kind of moving the text so her eye shows up because I think that kind of makes it a little more striking and that's just kind of a personal preference. So let's see, should I? I think I'm gonna give a little bit of breathing room there. All right, awesome. And we got that down. And so now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to put all this in a folder. We can call it the Mona Lisa. Sure, okay. And now this, you know, right now it kind of looks like the cover of a book. So what we'll do is we're going to create a mask here and then I'm going to use our new grunge brushes. Let's try this one. I haven't tried that one yet. And let's grunge it up. So I'm covering her mouth, which I probably don't want to do. Okay, I'm going to have to fix this. I have some ideas because that kind of makes her look creepy. <laughs> Their face like that. But okay, I love the mask, but I'm not too happy about what we did to the Mona Lisa. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to zoom out, hit Z, Option, and then Mouse. And I'm just going to shrink the Mona Lisa just a bit. So I do like... All right, me in there, but I really want to make sure that we get a good portion of her face 
from forehead to chin there all right that's cool and then what I'm going to do is add half her face there and I'm just nudging it around trying to find a good place and then what I'm going to do I'm going to duplicate this command J follow the same steps we did here delete that and then I'm just going to delete this one and there we go now she's we're back in business right here and this is pretty cool so I'm kind of digging this uh, so far and it's got a little bit of this grunge texture here so what I'm going to do I want to let's go back to my brush white make it a little bit smaller and I want to kind of fix her chin a little bit just a little bit because it kind of gave her a goatee fault it's crunch yes but okay so that's cool and then hmm uh, I want to do a little bit more grunge so let's make this bigger just a tab maybe right here okay that's cool yeah that's just enough and then uh, now this is kind of showing up here oh we just got that okay I know this is Get me back in that trap again. Okay, I'm going to use a different brush this time. Let's go back to our trusty. Uh, let's see here. This brush right here. I forgot the name of it. And we'll just kind of. There we go. Clean that up a bit. Okay, this is cool. Um, now. What else can we do with this image? I love this. I love art history. We've got the Mona Lisa here. It looks kind of cool, but let's see if we can do something else. Let's try inverse. And ooh, that's creepy. I don't know. Do we like it? Well, that's kind of cool. I think I like that. So part of working with Photoshop and just getting to learn the tools is just playing, just sitting down and experimenting and then pick up whatever tips you can along the way. Let's see. I kind of like this. I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I wonder what else I can do with this. Let's do threshold, which is kind of a cool thing. That kind of, let's see here. So let's see if this, if I do overlay, I'm messing with the blend modes now. Just trying to see what we can, what kind of cool stuff we can come up with. Soft light. Now here's a cool trick. If you hold shift and the minus or plus button, you can actually filter through all the blend modes. So that's really cool. So these blend modes right here, these are your dark so these will darken it so it'll take the top color and darken it on top of the bottom one these ones do the opposite light the overlay kind of adds i guess variations of a vibrancy to the image for example like this one right here will probably make it really bright and so these are variations of that and then these right here have different effects so the one people use a lot is the color so what's cool about color is that uh, I'll show you color so what we can do we can have a blend mode we'll do a solid color I'm gonna do this as purple okay so now what I can do I can so we have a purple solid color you can go down here to color and that made everything look purple so that's kind of cool you know for people who love purple actually wow I kind of like that <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That's pretty cool. Now I'm like, ooh, what do I do with this? Okay, experimenting again. So I kind of like this. Her hair is kind of in the background. You kind of see this. This is pretty cool, actually. I'm digging this. Okay. So we can send this over to Johnny. It's a really popular design right now. You might see this. So we're gonna get a piece of text. 
and let's choose a fill color to purple. Oops, oops, actually we'll do it later. So we got a text box here. Make it purple. Okay, now what we can do, we can add a text here, for example, change this to white. So we got this text here, the art museum on top of this purple box. You'll see in a second, but it's kind of a common design element that's popular these days. And I'm going to just shrink this. That's fine. And we'll have it like that. Maybe shrink that a little bit like that. And then I want to get rid of the stroke. So I'm going to uh, click that and let's see here. So what I did was this is a shape object and I selected the path selection tool. And you, once you see these little squares here, look at the top and you can change the fill color here. Um, and actually I'm happy with the fill color, but I'm gonna set it so there's no stroke. Now what we can do is we can take this, right click on it, hit blending options again. And then here, put shallow this time and then switch the opacity. So now if we put this, we might need to put this in a group. Theum. And then I'm going to, so there's some consistency. So what I did was this was clipped to just this grouping right here, but I unclipped it so that we have that purple on top of everything. And I'm taking this and I'm just going to, let's see, could I place it below it? That'd be kind of cool. I, you know, it, that, no, nah, I don't think that looks cool. I could do this. Let's see if it'll live here. And then, oh, that's kind of cool. It's kind of advertisement for the, uh, the art museum. So we were given creative license, so hopefully Johnny won't mind. Let's see here. I'm going to move just the text right there. Move this up a little bit. Move that. I'm going to put the art museum here. And I wonder if I can lighten this. I'm really not. Uh, let's see here. So I open up my color. I'm going to go to brightness. No, that's kind of cool. What if I desaturate it? So I want it to look more like here. See, can I select that? Ah, there we go. All right, cool. And let's see here. I want to find this. That right shade of purple. I kind of like the light one, actually. Maybe that works. Let me just shrink it just a little bit. I'm going to start here. No, the light one. Kind of adds contrast. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at that play with this for hours. So that's kind of a cool effect. I love art history and it kind of separates itself from the text and then also kind of acts as a base. So I love art history and then this is kind of the base, the art museum. So that's our t-shirt design.